Welcome to the Portionality Podcast, a curiously sermonic podcast playground for adulting over 30. Because let's keep it real, life will keep life in, with swift transitions, but together we can honor the moments we are in and keep on living. I am your host, Portia Williams Gates. Join me every Wednesday as we grow and live together. Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to the Portion Night Podcast. If you have not done so, do your girl a favor and subscribe to this podcast wherever you get this podcast. Make sure you comment, rate, make sure you like it, leave a comment, you know, all of the things. It only takes a couple minutes. So if you could, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who's done so already. You all are awesome. As always, make sure you are following me on social media at Portionality. And if you ever want to have a conversation, send over a note, whatever, whatever, you can email me at Portia at Portionality.com. All right. So today is another good one. It is Holy Week at the time of this podcast release. And so I love um, this idea of having a podcast during Holy Week centering around Lent and Good Friday specifically. Um, And as we are preparing for the resurrection of Jesus on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus, you know, conquering, you know, death in the grave and all those things, you know, raising with all power in his hands. You know, it's a good story. It's a good um, opportunity for us to lean in. Um, Those of us who are practicing of the Christian tradition or of the like, um, those of us who may be even Christian adjacent, because that's also a thing. Um, People who have grown up church, um, but may not necessarily still be practicing Christianity. That's also a thing. Um, So this is for all of the children. Okay, this is for all of the children. So um, if you are new to me, you may or may not know I'm an ordained minister and I am a degreed person of the seminary things and things and things and things. But, you know, I'm here for it. You know, I'm here for all of the things. And, you know, let's begin. Um, So as you know, the whole Lenten season, we're just going to give some context. The Lenten season is the whole period of fasting and prayer, you know, observed by many Christian denominations. It um, It's reminis- reminiscent of the time that Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days um, and he was sacrificing and fasting and getting prepared for for his earthly ministry. So Lenten season really is a season of preparation as it is also sacrifice, but it's about preparing oneself for the next phase um, and trusting that God will continue to provide. Holy week, you know, the week that we are in is the week that is leading all the way up to Resurrection Sunday. So it begins on Palm Sunday, which is the great protest, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You know, you may get a little palm or two, wave it in the air like you just don't care. And it commemorates Jesus's triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And then we also celebrate Maundy Thursday, which is the commemoration of the Last Supper, Jesus washing the disciples feet. And then there's also Good Friday, which is the day that Jesus was crucified. Um, There's Holy Saturday, which is the day of rest and stillness and reflection, um, the day that Jesus was in the tomb. And then, of course, there is Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday, as some will say, and that is the day that Jesus is risen, right? So here's my issue, right? So I'm down with all the things. I am down with all the things, but uh, sometimes... We consider Holy Week and Good Friday to be the black preaching Olympics, okay, especially on Good Friday around with the seven last words. And my issue has been that we often paint Jesus as this figure who is like ready to die like Biggie, okay? Jesus was killed by the state. Let's really get that clear, right? Jesus was murdered due to capital punishment, right? He died by way of the death penalty, right? He was murdered, right? And he was given over to the hands of the state. And Jesus, 
actually had an issue with dying, right? Jesus did not want to die. Um, and so we just kind of paint this picture like, oh, he was so willing and he was just so humble and he just decided to die. And it's just like, OK, like ultimately, yes, he yielded to the assignment. But at the same time, we also have to remember there's some political things happening here where Jesus was actually arrested um, and he was tried as guilty. And we have to also remember um, even in his sinlessness, he was tried as guilty um, for breaking the law for some of the things of the day. And he knew what was coming and what was ahead of him. He knew um, the prophecy. He knew what was being said in Isaiah, um, you know, about him um, being this, you know, Messiah figure, so to speak. Um, and so there are a lot of things here. And Jesus in particular um, you know, he's like 33 years old, you know, that's why we call it 33 the Jesus year. So he's like, you know, early thirties, you know, he has so much life to live, you know, people are living well into their hundreds at this time. And Jesus is like, this is complicated. This is really complicated and super complex because Jesus is young and this assignment that he has taken on, um, this assignment that he has, quote unquote, to um, sacrifice himself for the sake of sins. This is the narrative that we uh, like to tell, right? We like to tell the narrative of Jesus uh, sacrificed his life for the sake of everybody's sins. You know, it's, it's much more complex than just that, right? It's, it's much more nuanced, you know, and perhaps it's time that we start to consider that even though we love this narrative of Jesus dying for the sins, maybe it's time that we consider that maybe he didn't die for our sins, but rather he showed us how to live sin less. OK, how do we sin less, not be sin less as we will not sin, but to sin a little bit lesser than what we normally do. Perhaps we need to consider that Jesus shows us how to sin less. Perhaps Jesus lived to show us a better way of living. Perhaps Jesus lived to show us how to be better humans. Perhaps we have been so overcome by the death of Jesus that we miss the life of Jesus in the process. Perhaps we're so ready to kill Jesus off that we forget that he was a second career preacher. Okay. He wasn't even our first career preacher. We missed the fact that he had a whole day job as a carpenter first. Okay. We forget that Jesus is second career ministry. And and it's so funny to me because so many people put so much stock in being a first career pastor or preacher that we don't give ourselves enough space to think about the second career. Is there a second career? Can we have a second career? You know what I'm saying? I'm a second career entrepreneur. How about that? I was a first career pastor. You know, I'm still pastoring in a different context, but you know, there's so much here, right? We don't often give enough credit to the fact that Jesus was second career. So there's that. Right. Perhaps Jesus came to show us that there's multiple ways of doing something, that there's multiple opportunities, there's multiple options. There's more than one way to have life. OK, we miss these moments. Right. When we're tro so busy, caught up on Jesus being this person who sacrificed his life, we missed out on these moments of realizing that Jesus had friends, right? And I'm not talking about the disciples. Like Jesus actually had friends. Like, do you know that Jesus had friends? Like real friends. Lazarus, okay, was one of Jesus's actual friends. He wasn't just a disciple, right? You know, disciple is a follower of Jesus. Okay, cool. Got that, right? And a lot of times when we think about the disciples, we think about the 12. Well, there were more disciples than just the 12. And Jesus actually had friends who were not the disciples, and Lazarus was one of those people, right? The house of Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, they were his actual friends. Jesus was a full-fledged human being, and we don't talk enough about that. We're so caught up on his savior complex or the whole savior narrative that we miss out on the beauty of his humanity. We want to rush him to the cross and to the resurrection without any other considerations for his life. You know, there is this one particular moment that happens in the biblical text that really stands out for me. And it does happen during Holy Week. And that's on Thursday, right? It's when Jesus is in, the, is in the garden of Gethsemane. So when Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane, he is going to the garden to pray. And he takes a couple of disciples with him, you know, the in crowd. He doesn't take everybody with him. Just, you know, just three, James, John and Peter, just them. And he asks them to keep watch while he goes to pray. And Jesus decides to take this moment to talk to God, his creator, to say, take this cup from me. 
this really rare moment of vulnerability, right? It is found in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. You can look at Matthew 26, 36 through 46. You can look at Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 42, or you can look at Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46, right? This moment where Jesus is talking about take the cut from me is really vulnerable, right? It's, it, it, it's really vulnerable, And this is the thing, right? For us, it feels so rare to see that Jesus is having these feelings, right? He's having a moment where he leans into his, his, his humanity. And it's really rare because the text, the biblical text is curated in a way that does not radically display Jesus's humanity as it does his divinity, depending on which gospel you're reading. And there are some subtle moments where we see Jesus really folding into his humanity, um, really having some real human moments, having some vulnerable moments, having some moments where he needs to literally steal away and just take some personal time, just time away from everybody doing the everyday grind, right? He just takes some me time. We do see those moments, right? We do see moments where Jesus slips up and gets a little inappropriate. Yeah, he does. You know, there are some moments. And we absolutely sometimes bypass the humanity of Jesus and these human moments to make him all about being the savior, right? We miss out these moments where he was really human and just shows us how we can have a full life as a human being and what those things are, right? Jesus is not void of emotions and feelings and friendships and deep relationships and community, right? He is not uh, apart from those things. And so we put Jesus high upon this pedestal of thinking like, oh, this is the pinnacle of perfection rather than how Jesus teaches us how to be full-fledged humans and how we can lean into that um, authentically. So that's why I love uh, the story and the and the moment where Jesus is in Gethsemane. And so what can we learn, you know, from Jesus during this holy week when he is in the garden? What, what can we learn? So the first thing that I think that we can learn is it's OK if you don't want to go through with the thing that everyone is expecting you to do. It's OK for you to say, I don't want to do this and still choose to do it anyway. It is really OK to say, I don't want to do this. And Jesus has a real moment where he is alone with God and he gets really intimate with God and says, I don't want to do this. And a lot of times we don't make space for ourselves to just say, I don't want to do something. We don't get honest with ourselves to say, this is too much. I'd rather not engage in this way. And even though Jesus continues to go on with the crucifixion and he does go forth and getting arrested and all these things, he still admits to himself and is, has radical honesty to say, I don't want to do this. When was the last time we got honest with God about something we just didn't want to do? Even if we find ourselves doing it anyway, when was the last time that we gave ourselves permission to say, I don't want to do this or that this is too hard or that this is difficult or that this is complicated. God, I need you to be here with me present in this moment. When was the last time we were honest about that? Hmm. You know, Jesus goes on with this assignment, but that doesn't mean that we should bypass the fact that he has some reservations around it. So that's the first thing that we learn. The second thing that I think that we can walk away with and learn is knowing that it's okay to hold people accountable for their actions. Jesus asked the disciples to keep watch with him while he went to pray. And quite frankly, they fell asleep on him like they went to sleep. Okay, they were lights out nap time. Okay, like for real. I get that they were tired. Right. And they really let him down. I want us to encourage us. Right. To extend grace to people around us, even when they let us down. People will let us down even when they're well-intentioned because they are too are human. As we want people to recognize our humanity, we have to also recognize the humanity of other people. It's not easy hanging with Jesus. And to be honest, the disciples, their lives were also at risk by being with Jesus. It was worth the risk, but it was a risk nonetheless. And so it is also a reminder for us to have a needing support systems that are strong enough to support us in our times of need. Everyone cannot show up in their full capacity and be as present as we need them to be in some seasons, and that's okay. 
but it's okay to get us some people who have the capacity to do so. And it's okay not to fault the people who don't have the capacity in those times where we really, really feel like we need them. And then the other thing that I really think is important that we can learn from Jesus in Gethsemane is that in all things, pray. Jesus in the garden it reminds us that we should be praying. We need to have some type of interior devotional life with God. This is the holy season and it is one that requires us to pray. If nothing else, the Lenten season, Holy Week reminds us that we should be praying. We do a whole lot of talking, hooting, hollering and shouting, but I don't see enough people praying. I think the most radical thing that a community could do during this time of Holy Week is to have a prayer shut in, have a prayer service or some type of time of contemplation and deep reflection or even a service of lament. When was the last time we just had prayers of lament? When was the last time we just prayed prayers of lament? Are we too busy spiritually bypassing our emotions in order to get our praise on that we forget the prayers of lament are just as holy as our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers of praise? When was the last time we allowed ourselves to lament in prayer, to go to God with our laments? When was the last time we got really vulnerable and honest with God in prayer? And these moments, whether we're doing it individually or collectively, are so important. It is important for us to be honest and authentic and true with God about how we're feeling, about what we're feeling, when we are feeling it. And we can be honest. Jesus models the fact that we can still talk to God, that we still have an open line of communication. And that open line of communication is absolutely necessary and important. And so that's what I have for y'all this week. You know, that's what I have. I hope you have a blessed Holy Week. I hope you have a beautiful resurrection season. I hope that there is something that has been said or done that has impacted or touched your heart in some way. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email at Portia, um, Portia at portionality.com. Reach out to me on social media at Portionality. And please do remember to rate, comment, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're getting your podcasts. Blessings, beloveds, and I will talk to you all soon. Peace.